a portrait of the Horsehead Nebula in Orion, a photograph through one of the most powerful and sophisticated instruments on Earth. It came from here, the 1.2 metre Schmidt, on Siding Spring Mountain in New South Wales. Operated by the Anglo-Australian Observatory, the Schmidt is the biggest telescopic camera, resolving the finest detail in the Southern Hemisphere. A cosmic eye, requiring huge photographic plates, sheets of light-sensitive glass that may be exposed for hours. Schmidt colour masterpieces are produced by photographing the sky on three occasions, each time using a different filter. And here's a portable version. For it's just as likely that the amateur will be setting up for an overnight shoot in the outback. These photos of Halley's Comet were produced with such equipment. A small telescope and a Schmidt camera with a wide-angle lens. For pin-sharp pictures, the photographer must track the heavens. In this long exposure, the camera had locked on to the motion of the stars. And this is time-lapse, where a special static camera takes an exposure once every 30 seconds. The stars turn because of Earth's rotation. Do the same with an ordinary camera, but leave the lens open for a few hours, and the result is star trails. These ones are circular because the camera was looking at the southern pole of the sky the red glow from a rare Australian aurora. This is two exposures, a quick one for the star point, a few hours for the trail. And here the camera has been progressively refocused over a long exposure. A pretty effect revealing the true colours of stars. Mounted between the camera and the tripod is an automatic drive. It compensates for the spin of the earth and keeps the camera locked on to its moving targets. Using such a drive, a long exposure achieved this picture on low speed film. With very fast film, a drive is unnecessary. By holding the shutter open for 30 seconds on a cable release, anyone can capture the cosmos. Here's the Andromeda Galaxy, the most distant object visible to the naked eye. And the constellation of Orion from the Southern Hemisphere, another 30 second exposure. The two Magellanic Clouds, our satellite galaxies. One of them in close up, again on high speed film. A little art, the stars through the glow of a terrestrial volcano. Another in Hawaii, all with a regular 35mm camera. A little house beneath the stars. The trick was to use a flashlight on the bungalow during a 30 second exposure. The same here and in the sky at the top, Halley's Comet. Astronomy is a science which lay people can share. That's its joy. The first stop for the serious amateur observer should be a reputable telescope shop. But before deciding on a purchase, the enthusiast should seek advice, for the array of instruments is tantalizing. This is a typical beginner's telescope, a refractor. For stability, it's mounted on a stand. A refractor gathers light from the stars through a large lens. The image is focused at the other end of the tube and magnified in the eyepiece. 
It's the amount of light gathered that's important, not magnification. An alternative starter is this reflecting telescope. Again, it's the capacity to gather light that matters. Incoming light hits a mirror at the bottom of the tube. The light is bounced to a smaller mirror and reflected to an eyepiece on the side. This manual drive is a handy accessory to keep a telescope on track, for Earth is always turning. A motor drive is necessary for bigger telescopes. Their greater magnification calls for finer tracking. Here's a Dobsonian, a simple low magnification reflector, but pulling in lots of light. And it's relatively inexpensive. This one is a telescopic hybrid, part reflector, part refractor. Lens and mirror synthesizing a superb image. A small instrument with a big performance. The stylish and intriguing catadioptric. There are smaller versions, no bigger than a camp stove and equally portable. A mighty eye on the sky for the mobile observer. And here, a filter to turn a personal telescope into a competent solar observatory. With the filter and other safety devices attached, movie of a solar prominence. Also through a small telescope, the surface of the sun. Shots so defined, they wouldn't shame a professional. And again, using a solar filter, a partial eclipse of the sun. An eclipse brings out the most exotic equipment. Giant filters to protect both telescope and camera, and most importantly, the eyes of the observer. The results can be awe-inspiring. But they can be had only through filters, whether expensive optics or the simplest device. The wrong way and the right way to shoot movie of an eclipse. One is handheld, the other is rock steady on a tripod, even with a telephoto lens. The lack of a telescope is no bar to astrophotography. This is an eclipse of the moon shot on a 35mm camera in central London, amid massive light pollution. And here, a partial eclipse of the moon. A touch romantic. The moon with three planets, Jupiter, Saturn and Venus. And a young moon with Venus. As the great modern telescopes collect images from the cosmos, they're stored on CCDs, electronic chips. The tool of the professional astronomer. No more, the CCD is now available to amateurs and the sky's the limit. A distant cluster of stars on amateur CCD. The nebula of a dying star, amateur CCD. Craters on the moon, amateur CCD. A remote galaxy, amateur CCD. But for all the advances in technology, there's emerging a more traditional way for the layperson to capture the cosmos, the developing genre of space art. <laughs>